guys, how's it going? So today's video is going to be a little bit different. We are in our kitchen, we're inside, which we're going to be filming a lot more in here now that we are getting further into fall and it's starting to get cold out. Um, so it's a little bit echoey. I have focused 0% of my energy on the inside of our new house. We moved in in May and so I haven't done anything, no rugs, curtains, paint, pretty much nothing inside until we have snow. So I'm spending every last minute outside that I can. The second thing is that we are going to do a long video. A lot of you have been requesting long videos, so be careful what you wish for. <laughs> We're gonna try to do as few cuts as possible. Um, so you might recognize this arrangement. I put this together months ago and uh, it's been kind of neglected. So what I'm gonna do today is just take it apart, show you how I do that, talk a little bit about the plants, and then I'm gonna repot them. So typically I take pretty good care of my arrangements and I groom them as I go, but we've been so busy and gone and I mean, that's not a great excuse, but uh, about midway through the summer, I noticed it was starting to look a little like meh. And then I let it go because I get a lot of pictures from you guys and a lot of questions about what to do with succulent planters once they get to a point where they really need some attention. So I thought, you know what, I'll let this get to a point where it needs to be worked on and then we'll do it together. So what I'm gonna do is pop all the plants out first. That's the first thing I do. Take everything out. I'm gonna groom it as I go. Um, and then I'm gonna be repotting them up individually. That's another thing. So once I have everything out, a lot of times I'll either put them together in new arrangements or like today I'm gonna pot them pretty much all in individual pots because since we're into winter and our living areas, like the places where we spend lots of time don't have really bright light. So I'm putting all of my cactus and succulents up into one of our unused bedrooms and it's not pretty. We'll give you a tour of it sometime. It's just a bunch of shelves and grow lights because I'm not about to put a grow light in our living areas. They're not pretty things to look at. So anyway, it's easier to fit things on shelves if they're individually potted in smaller pots. So I'm gonna start on this side of the arrangement and just start popping stuff out. So this one right here, is like a, it looks like a black Prince Echeveria. I don't know, you guys tell me in the comment section. I've also, it could be a, is it a black knight? I don't know, but it's putting on a bloom stock. It's really pretty, but see how it's starting to like, it seems like it maybe got a little bit wet, like too wet on that side. So I'm just gonna pop off a bunch of these leaves right here. I'm gonna leave as much of the root system on all of these as I can. I might have to take some cuttings, but these leaves are getting a little bit soggy. It's still a really nice looking plant. So if I can get it in some good, well-draining soil and just kind of leave it alone, I think it'll be fine. I'm just gonna set that one aside. And then it looks like a grap to a sow, a sedum. This looks like, a, oh, and a dead one. So see, this happens. This looks like it was maybe a sempervivum. <laughs> I don't know, it's dead. So we'll take that one out. And this looks like it's a firestorm sedum. It looks really nice. And Portulacaria variegata. This is a variegated elephant bush. These are awesome. I love to use these in arrangements just because they give you that pop of white and they have the really pretty pink stems and they also, cobweb or something, they also um, add some height, which is really important in arrangements. Okay, and then we've got, okay, so this is a great example of something. This was toward the back side of the, well, obviously to the back of the arrangement, which was facing the back of our gazebo, so it wasn't getting a lot of sun on this side. So look at how this has stretched. So I am going to behead this one. To do that, you just cut off the top like that. So I'm gonna discard. I might pop some of these leaves off to propagate later, but this one I'm gonna let sit aside. So I'm not gonna pop this one up today. I'm gonna let this one sit aside and callus, and then I'll just put it back down into some cactus soil and it'll root and be fine. So I'm gonna set this one on this side so I know what to do. And then we've got a Crisula here. Looks like some more just like dead foliage that needed to be groomed off. This one's got a nice big root system on it. I love these. I always recommend the Crisula or Jade plants as a good beginner succulent for people or aloe vera is another good one too because they really show you when they need water so there's not a huge it's not a huge guessing game so they'll like their leaves will start to pucker and then you can tell that they need water um we have really hard water where um Aaron and I live so there's always if it gets splattered with water there's always some white kind of residue and so I'll probably wipe that off after I get it repotted so it looks nice and clean there's that one Oh, and then this one is really pretty. This is an Aeonium, it, ooh, nice root system on it. So this one, it looks like got a little bit eaten on the edges. We have 
ear, I bet you it was earwigs. We have earwigs really bad. But this one is just going into its growing season. So winter time for most Aeonians is their growing season. So I'll pot this up and make sure to keep it watered regularly and get some good light on it. But I love the rosette shape of this one. Oftentimes um, these are confused with Echeverias, which is this one right here because they're both rosette shaped. But this is an Aeonium, that is an Echeveria. Okay, there's more Portulacaria and some more dead leaves. Then another Crassula. So almost everything is looking pretty good. Like there's not a ton of like bad foliage, which is nice. Okay, so then I'm running across a couple of lemon coral sedums, which I'm gonna groom out some dead leaves here from something else. And so this one, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it back because a lot of the foliage, it's looking just a little bit tired. So what I'm gonna do is just shear it kind of like this and it will push new growth. So I will pot that up and it'll push new growth. It'll be really pretty. I used this one a lot this summer in arrangements because I love that bright yellow pop it gives. There's another piece of it. Okay, there's a couple of cuties in the back. These are chubby, they're really cute. They're a little bit leggy though. You know what, I'm gonna behead these ones too. So I'll set this aside to callus. And by callus, I mean set it in a bright, but not in direct sun, put it in a bright spot for just a few days. I usually let them set for two to three days. That way that end that's all wet right now can callus over really well before I put it down in soil and that helps them to not rot uh, when you're trying to root them. And then we've got Senecio Blue Chalk Fingers. These are another good one, like the Portulacaria, great for adding some height. And I love the blue, that really silvery blue. I'm always really careful. Now this is something that annoys me. I'm careful not to touch the leaves. Sometimes I do touch the leaves, but like on these and then on Echeverias, I see people, and I know I'm a tangible person too, I like to touch and feel things, but they get this really uh, kind of real pretty powdery substance on their leaves that gives them their look. You touch them, you can see it, you can see fingerprints. And I used to do it, I remember when somebody told me about it, because I was sitting there touching the leaves and they were like, oh, you shouldn't touch the leaves, it wrecks them. So I don't do that anymore. And now I see people doing it. And I'm like, no. <laughs> okay, so there's a Graptivaria right here. California Sunset is what it looks like. Totally leggy. So I'm gonna cut this one too to reroute. I find that like a lot of the time with uh, succulents that are tucked in really tight, they will not get quite enough light. And so they will stretch, but you're not wasting the plant because you could always cut the tops off and reroute them. And you actually most of the time get more plants than you had in the beginning. So. A lot, of, a lot of people ask me if plants that are planted in really tight together will survive. They do most of the time. I've had one dead one so far, so that's not bad. More Sinisu, look at the roots on this one. Okay, and then quick, I'm gonna get this one out of the way. This, ooh, there's a box elder bug. Yeah. That's another thing. So I'm gonna address that. When I pot these, I have some, I've got all my soil and pots right behind me and I've got some insecticide that I'll use if needed. So far, I don't see anything. That box elder bug is not a problem. Um, I don't see any insect problems, but I'll look everything over really, really well when I'm done here. Now, this is a Portulaca Mojave Fuchsia. It has done so beautifully. Now, the awesome thing about this plant is that the blooms open up in the sun in the daytime, and they're huge. They're huge fuchsia blooms, and they're a nice trailing plant. So, I've really enjoyed this one, but what I'm gonna do, I've never wintered this type over before, so this is gonna be an experiment. I'm gonna cut all the leggy stuff off so I've got a nice tight kind of mound, and then we'll see how it goes. I'll make sure to put it in a real bright spot up in my bedroom up there. Have to get all this stuff out of the way. Yeah, that already looks a little bit better. But you can see the color there. Look at that. Such a bright pop of color. That's the cool thing about succulents. When they bloom, they bloom and they're gorgeous. Cactus too. That's when I started to like cactus. Because when I noticed, I didn't know that they bloomed and I started to take, to take care of them more down at the nursery where I work. And I then noticed their bloom cycles and how gorgeous their blooms are. And that's what started to make me fall in love with them a little bit. I can understand people who don't like them because I've been there, but I love them now. Oh, the root system on this is really good. So look at that one. I might do a little more cleaning up when I get it in a pot. In a pot. OK, 
Okay. More Senecio. Oh, something else came out. This is an this looks like an aloe of some variety. Let's see. More Crassula. Senecio. Sen this looks like a, some Senecio that kind of curled up on me a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, this is a great example of a Crassula that needs water. So if you can see this, it, like, the leaves are a little bit like limp and underneath and really on the top too, you can see that they're starting to pucker. And that means that they need more water. It's a totally easy fix. They almost immediately like just give them a couple hours and you'll see them back to normal. And I love that. They're forgiving and they tell you when they need water. So a great one for beginners. This is another one of the Echeveria from the beginning. This one too has got some downturn leaves. So I'm gonna pop off the ones around the bottom here. So I've got a nice rosette left. These are actually pretty healthy though. So I'm gonna set these ones aside because I love to start some new babies for my collection here. We did a video on how to propagate succulents. So if you have any questions, because I'm probably not gonna get in depth uh, on that subject in this video, but make sure to go watch that one. It's just called How to Propagate Succulents and you should be able to kind of figure it out from there. It's not that hard. Okay, here's another aloe. This one is not looking the best, but it's still got some roots. It looks like it was kind of popped up out of the soil, so probably needs more water. This is the prize right here. This is an Echeveria Sahara. Isn't that the most gorgeous thing you have about ever seen? Love the frilly leaves and it's starting to, it's got some bloom stalks here, but see I've got some dried leaves, which is totally normal. A lot of people ask about that. They'll send me a picture and say, is this normal? There's a bunch of leaves around the base of my plant that are dried up. That's pretty normal. They'll do that and you can just pop them off easily. This one's pretty clean, I'm super surprised. So that one's got kind of a trunk. So what I'll do when I plant it, it's got nice healthy roots around in here, I can see them. I'll probably just plant it up a little bit, a little ways and it'll probably form new roots out from its trunk there. But that is one gorgeous plant right there. Okay, I'll be careful not to touch the leaves on that one to wreck it. Okay, more Senecio. Now this one is a little bit wild, I was noticing that. I'm gonna probably reroute this one because I don't like the direction it's going. So you just cut off the top, let it heal, and then you can push it back down in the soil with all the rest of them after it's calloused over. They root pretty easily. And this one I'm gonna set aside. Okay, this lemon coral, another box elder bug. God, they're so bad this year. They don't do anything, the box elder bugs. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with them. They're just like this little beetle. Um, they eat the the seeds off of our elm trees. Uh, they don't harm plants at all, which is nice, but they're such a nuisance, they're everywhere. Okay, another lemon coral sedum. So I'm gonna cut this one back as well. Have a fresh start. Okay, set that right up there with the others. More Crassula. Crassula, I probably say that wrong, I have no idea. Okay, now this, is the most messy looking plant. I've got a little clump of Sempervivums over here. Look at this, geez, <laughs> that, that's been bugging me. I've been noticing that and I've been really wanting to groom it, but I had to wait for this video. So what I do, so see there's the kind of the mother plant there and then there's babies. So I'm just gonna pop that off, pop all of them off and separate them. I'm gonna clean all of these leaves out from underneath and then we'll just reroot them. So we can just push them down into some cactus soil, make sure they stay fairly moist, not wet. When, when things are rooting, I always have, keep them a little bit more well watered than regular succulents. So now this one, oh, this is so satisfying. Oh, pulling those leaves it instantly makes things look, look better. It's like when you dust something super dusty, the top of a piano, that's the best. Okay, so this one's got a really nice root system on it. It's a really pretty one. This one looks like it's, I don't think it's a green wheel. I'm not sure what kind this one is. Planted so many different varieties this summer. Okay, so this is gonna take me a little bit. Another one. 
So look at that. Oh, it's just, just awful to look at. Easy fix though. I think one of the things that kind of holds people back, and maybe I'm wrong, but I think it's fear, fear of killing your plant. That's the wonderful thing about succulents is that they're so forgiving. I mean, it looks like I'm just ripping the heck out of these plants, but they're probably thanking me for it. Give them some fresh soil and kind of a new lease on life. Look at this. So this is its main stem and it's formed roots all along the side there. They just are amazing plants. Now these sempervivums too, they're hardy. So I could plant these outside, which depending on how my pots hold out, I only have a small stack they may end up going outside. But they do equally as well inside too. I always like to have some fresh ones. That. Go. We're also planning on doing very soon a grow light video. So I wanna show you kind of my setup. Like I said, it is so not pretty. It's kind of a cobbled together kind of wreck of everything that I have. Um, right now I only have, I've got some grow lights coming, um, some more intense systems because I just need it now. But up to this point, I've been able to get away with, I've got I think three two foot systems. So there's just one single grow light bulb in a two foot uh, ballast. I think that's what they're called. And um, then I think I've got three clamp lights. So the clamping type that have the little metal shroud with just a grow bulb inside. Um, it's barely gotten me through winters uh, in the last two, you know, this one looks bad, I'm gonna toss this one. It's barely gotten me through the winters the last two years, but um, I need to up my game. And I thought I would show you some of the uh, things that I'm doing, um, some of the systems, because there's some really good ones out there. And I mean, honestly, you don't have to spend a ton because uh, you can really, you can fashion quite a bit on your own. Um, but sometimes it's nice just to have them done for you. So, okay, so those are the Semper Vivums. One plant left, and this is a sedum right here. This one's really pretty. Look at it bloomed earlier, so sweet. I love this little one. So I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. I don't think I'm gonna cut this guy back. And then the clean out is officially done. Okay. It's pretty good. There we go. So that is all the plants out of this big long planter. I wanna do something different, I think, in this one. So I'm gonna move this aside and gather up all my stuff. So I'm gonna kinda of push my plants forward a bit and get all of my supplies up here. Terracotta, I love terracotta pots. And saucers, this is super important to make sure to have something go underneath your containers, otherwise you'll have a total mess on the floor. Tons of cactus soil mix. I like to use the Expoma organic cactus mix. Um, not because it's organic necessarily, because honestly I'm not eating these things, so it doesn't really make that much difference to me that it's organic. I just like the mix. I like how it feels. I like um, how quickly it drains, and my plants seem to be really happy in it. And I've tried lots of different types of soils, so so far this is my favorite. So I think that this will do it a few back. Well, you know what? Maybe I'll just have a couple up here at a time. Okay, and then I have an insect control just in case. I don't think I'm gonna have to use it, but if you guys saw our bringing in houseplants video, really important to really look your plants over. Make sure you're not dealing with any aphids or spider mites or anything like that because you do not want to have that problem inside, especially if you have other plants that you're kind of introducing all of these two. So it doesn't look like I'm gonna to have to use this, but I'm gonna have it on hand, just in case I notice anything. You guys might recognize these. These are the urns, the iron urns from the triple urn challenge last year. So last year we did a challenge every single month where I had to use one, two, or three. I have three of these urns in a different arrangement. It was super challenging, but I'm excited to put succulents in them. Okay, so that is it. I'm just gonna get started. So, I think, I think I want my big Echeveria maybe. Hmm. I'm not worried about these looking super fancy pants, to be honest, in the end, since they're just going up to really not be seen by a whole lot of people. I don't know. Yeah, I think that'll be pretty. Let's 
So normally I don't do this straight on my counter either. I have one of those big plastic like, tub things with sides, but the, the front is really low. Makes potting inside super easy and cleaner. It contains your mess a little bit. So I'm kind of taking off some of the, the soil off the sides, which is completely fine to do. You can make it fit. They tend to like to be a little bit pot bound. Um, so it will do perfect in this pot right here. If I can get it in there far enough. I think the Saharas are really hardy. Like they can um, take more sun than most other echeverias, which is kind of nice. But they're not, they're not hardy, winter hardy. Not winter hardy enough for my area anyway. So it has to be inside. Look at that. That is so pretty. Oh, I love it. Okay, so now I'm going to try to get some soil in here around it. Of course, just cleaned the kitchen yesterday. <laughs> Makes sense. Get nice and messy today. All right. It's looking pretty good. And sometimes I top dress the soil and sometimes I don't. Now, since I'm just kind of harboring these over till next spring or until I need them in another project, I probably won't waste any soil top dressed on them. Um, if I use a top dress, it's usually like a preserved sheet moss. I like super moss brown preserved sheet moss. Or I'll use little stones or um, something like that. But in this case, it's kind of nice to see the soil so I can see what it looks like, see if it's needing to be, if they're needing to be watered or not. It's a lot easier that way. So. Okay, so that one's done. Looks pretty. All right. Next urn. Okay. I'll decide what to do. I don't know if I can fit all my crassulas in here. Let's see. Maybe. are so pretty. I might need to bunch them up first, like in a bouquet. Yeah. Look at that. It's just so, so pretty. tuck this one in. Oh my goodness. Ugh. I don't have allergies. I don't know what's going on right now. It's because we're trying not to cut in this video. So my nose is going to itch and I'm going to want to sneeze and all kinds of stuff. All right. Can't believe those all fit and they will be happy. Trust me. all done I'll probably put these all in the sink and kind of you know, I'll give them a good you know, first time watering after they've been potted and I'll rinse off the containers and everything before I take them upstairs there's that one all done now I move on to terracotta now like it one of the things that I really wish that I could attain is having all uniform like all uniform pots all the same pots for all my plants so that having them on the shelf and seeing them all lined up they'd all be in just like I like terracotta so simple terracotta and I try, but my stash, my plant stash morphs so often and so much, like it expands and shrinks so much that I have a really hard time keeping up with it. So I end up kind of having a menagerie of different stuff, plastic too, which I hate. I hate having my plants in plastic pots, um, but sometimes it's just, they move so fast that it's not worth doing all the work to get them all, all moved into a new pot. Okay. So I'm going to do the Senecio in this container here, if I can fit them all. So see, I've got a few little leaves to groom up. Not, not too bad though. Okay. There's that. 
And I bury them usually just a tiny bit deeper than they need to go. You wanna make sure to leave a good, you know, a good lip so that you can water them without water running out. Okay. Ooh, this is a big one. So need some attention. Aaron, was that your phone? <laughs> I forget to turn it off. Yep. <laughs> okay, whoa. It's like wrangling, plant wrangling. Should be a new sport. This is a nice looking piece. Okay, a few little dead leaves on this one. These ones I'm really careful not to overwater. They tend to rot easier for me. And maybe it's just me, I don't know. If you guys take care of it, let me know what you do. Um, but I keep a really close eye on the water for these guys in particular. It seems like the sedums, like the lemon coral and even the semper vivums can stand a little bit more water than the rest of my plants. It all depends too on the type of container you've got them in. A lot of times I like to plant succulents in like small shallow bowls and dishes like that. And so they need watered more often than they will like in pots like this. And you can see like I'm trying to hold them from underneath their leaves so I don't mess up all the nice blue powder that they've got going on. Okay. Almost there. Maybe. Okay, so I think the camera just stopped automatically because this is taking me too long. Um, so I don't think it missed, but just a couple of seconds. So I was just saying that when I get these in the sink to clean off the pots and water them in, I'll probably manipulate the plants a little bit more. Um, it'll be easier to, when the soil is wet, to manipulate the plants. So that is the plan. So that one is pretty much done. Next, I might start doing a few combos because I've got a lot of smaller plants left here. Except for this one. This is a nice good size. This one gets its own plant or its own pot. We've got to get upstairs and do a tour soon of this room because I've got quite a bit right now. Like I think my collection's on the larger side at the moment, um, which not a bad thing, it's kind of fun. The thing about it though is that in the, the winter time, it seems like, and maybe it's my grow light situation, maybe once I get more grow lights up there, it'll be different, but I have problems with them turning just kind of a paler color and not being colored up as well um, as they are during the summer when they're getting more sun and getting kind of more of their natural, what they like. Okay, so there's that one. This one's kind of one-sided though. I'm gonna do some more pruning. It'll correct a little bit once it's been in here for a little bit. Because it was hanging out of that one side of the container. So of course it's gonna be a little bit more weird shaped. We'll fix that though. All right. That's pretty good. That's a looker right there. I hope it does well. I'm excited to see how that one does over the winter time. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna do the portulacaria. I'm gonna do this in a combo. It's not gonna be a, like a pretty combo, but I'm just getting them in here so that um, they have somewhere to grow and root a little bit and I'll be pulling them apart probably within no time to do, use in other arrangements. So I'm going to do this one, my nose, oh. like this, you know what I have had too, a lot of people in the last couple of days in fact tell me that it's really hard for them to um, work with these without popping leaves off. So what I do is I try to gently ease them out of the pots um, from underneath. So I'll grab on from underneath 
and then kind of squeeze the pot off. So when it's in its plastic nursery pot, so I'll squeeze it off. And then I try to do everything from underneath by just grabbing its root ball or its you know, trunk or whatever it has. So I'm not having to directly touch the leaves and it seems to work out pretty good. I mean, it doesn't mean I don't ever break a leaf off because I do, it happens, because um, they are kind of fragile. But to practice makes progress, I guess. You get better as you go. Okay, put this other one in here. So like I said, there's totally no art to what I'm doing here. I'm just finding a spot in pots um, for them to live for a little while. If I had smaller pots, I'd probably pot them all individually in smaller pots, but I wasn't thinking that far ahead when I went to the garden center to pick up, pick up some pots, so I got all the same size. Okay, so there's that, and then I'm gonna probably pop these down in here. Give them the space to grow. I swear there was a Haworthia in here somewhere. I wonder got hmm I am losing it I swear I saw one in here earlier hmm I'm gonna check the pot ah there it is my smoke's growling found it I thought I saw it in there earlier so there's a little cute Haworthia in there, which did really well. These ones do better in lower light, and I had this one toward the back side of the arrangement. So, yay. Okay, so that one's done. Looks great, huh? Okay, so Aeonium is gonna go in this one. And these ones, um, so it's going into its growing season, like I said. Um, these ones, I, I don't know, I don't know a ton about Aeoniums. All I know is when I've propagated them, I really only have luck with stem cuttings, not leaf uh, propagation. And I don't know if that's a thing, but I haven't really done a whole lot with them. So I wanna do more, learn a little bit more about them because they're gorgeous plants. Okay, I'm gonna put the lemon coral in this pot. I'm gonna break up its root ball a little bit. So it fits. I think that'll be pretty, that lemon coral color with the Aeonium. Another piece. And then probably the sedum. Oh yeah, that's looking good. So you guys only ever get to see like the pretty end results. <laughs> now you get to see what they actually look like when they're in, in keeping, when they're just waiting for a project. They don't look so great. Another bag of soil. done one more I think we've got a Haworthia we've got a sedum and some sempervivums left just get those potted up real quick look at this mess Okay, so sedum's gonna go in on the front on this one. Isn't that cute? That'd be really pretty in like one of those head planters. Really sweet, a little sedum. Okay, and then I'm gonna put the Haworthia in this one. It's just right to the side there, give it a little space. And then I'm just gonna plug these in, just around.
And I think these look much happier now that they're all groomed up a little bit. A few more. Perfect. So that's the goal is really just to get these plants separated and even though they're not going into a pretty arrangement, they're all being put somewhere where they have a little bit of room around them to grow a little bit and they'll just be happy. They'll have some light, um, they'll all get watered appropriately uh, and then when I'm ready to use them in something pretty, I can take them apart. So I'm just going to clean this up really quickly and then I'll line them all up so you can see what it all looks like. One, two, three, four, five. Oh perfect amount of saucers. All right, so it's all cleaned up and I hope you guys enjoyed seeing kind of the unedited, unsped up process of how I do succulent arrangements. Um, like I said, this was a neglected kind of on purpose, kind of, it was neglected a little bit and then I just let it go further um, just to show you guys that, you know, you can tear stuff apart and it's okay, the plants will be fine. You might lose one or two, you know, in a, in a season, which is not bad considering how many were in that container. I get asked that so much when I do an arrangement because I like to put things in like really tight. I like a lot of plants, a lot of color, a lot of texture and everybody always asks, not everybody, a lot of you guys ask me if um, I'm killing the plants, if they're going to survive, how they're going to grow. A lot of them do just fine. But a lot of the time in those type of arrangements after like a year, of course this one wasn't a year, this one's just been um, several months. but. Usually a year later after I do an arrangement, I like to take them apart so I can do something new. Um, and then, like I said, it's essential for me to get these, I needed to get these in so that I can get them into the warmth so they don't freeze. They've actually had to go through a couple of 36 degree nights, which was pushing it. Um, and they did it. They look fine for that. Uh, but I need to get them in and get them in appropriate size pots so that they'll fit on my plant shelves so they can be under grow lights and so they'll be happy. So these four I think look really good just as monos by themselves. They look nice. Uh, these three, like I said, uh, aren't nice. I didn't put them together in any kind of um, like artful, creative fashion. I just wanted to provide a place with, uh, for them to grow. So I've got like random stuff put together, um, but like the Aeonium is going into its growing season, but the sedum will enjoy the type of watering that I'll have to give the Aeonium. You wanna always keep that in mind that you're putting compatible plants together um, as far as watering and light goes. So anyways, you guys, that is the video. Um, if you liked this long version and liked to hear me ramble on for a long, long time, let us know. So leave a thumbs up down below if you liked this or leave a comment and let us know um, if you'd like to see the process. It's kind of fun to do something different today. Well, we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.